idea sometimes that we're in the battle alone can be a little overwhelming. And we think, well, we're the only one dealing with this, or we're the only one here, or whatever the case. We struggle with that. And there are times that it does feel like that indeed we're alone. And alone, the idea, the concept, the feeling of that can without a question impact our faith if we're not careful. It can absolutely cause us to feel like, man, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I'm in a dilemma, and how do I answer this? How do I deal with that? And I don't have anybody to turn to. And, and then we get ourselves into a panic and a frenzy, and we're wearing out the floor, pacing back and forth. And, and, and it's, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. And so we look today at this familiar story of Daniel. His faith has placed him outside of the inclusion of others. We may find that to be true today as well. If we're standing firm on our faith and we really, really know without a question what God has done for us and we stand firm in that and we don't have any wavering of that, that may very well put us in today's world on the outside circle of others. That's just real, okay? But let me assure you, you're not alone. It may feel like it at times because we don't have anybody coming along beside us and giving us the attaboy and the pats on the backs and man, that's great. But God sees your every move. He hears your heart. And he will will get you through this, I assure you. Let's look at this story. Daniel wasn't alone, literally. He had other people around him. But this time of testing, we've been talking about hard times, testing hard times, faith in hard times. This this testing before others and before God, it it was real. It was, it, was, it was real because it was real to him. When, when we feel alone sometimes in our battles, the struggle can be overwhelming. Whether, whether it is the, the strength of our faith, if we don't have that to lean on, um, or if we don't have a boldness that, that not only helps us. But what we need to understand is when we have that, and that we have that faith to lean on, that strength to lean on, it, it doesn't just help us, it helps others. And sometimes our encouragement to others makes us stronger. Can we believe that today? Sometimes when we realize, wait a minute, I've made a difference. And it's not a pride or an arrogant thing, but I wrestle with this sometimes. I just did this past week. There's times that we question, does what we do matter? Does what we say matter? Does anybody even care? Because we live, we live in a world that just seems to be, it's all about the self. It's all about the individual and pretty much who cares about anything or anybody else. That's the world that we live in. And sometimes we can get overwhelmed in that. Sometimes we can feel alone in the things that we're trying to do. See, the enemy desires failure. We need to understand that today. The enemy does not want us to succeed. He wants us to quit. He wants us to throw in the towel. He wants us to say, just the heck with everything. It doesn't matter anymore. That's where he wants us to be mentally, physically, spiritually, every other way. We look at the life of Daniel. Daniel had found favor with the king. They, 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 he saw goodness in Daniel. He saw you know, faithfulness, and, and, and he saw that this was, this was a good person. This was, a, this was someone that was faithful. This was someone that did their job, someone that was dependable. But those that saw that from the outside, those who wanted to be more important, those who wanted to be a little closer to the king, all for the wrong reasons, because they wanted more recognition and more this and that, they were jealous. They hated Daniel. They would do anything to get rid of him. So what happened? The plotting began. Let's figure out how we can get rid of that guy. Man, he's in our way. That sounds a little modern, doesn't it? That's kind of the world that we live in today. So they they, they couldn't find anything against him. They're looking all over the place and, well, he's okay there. And, well, man, he's okay there too. And they couldn't find anything. So they said, we'll get him about this faith thing. We'll get him based on his belief in God. We'll get him. We'll figure out a way. We're going to get him. So the next step would be, we can't find anything. Well, let's just make it up. So that's basically what they did. The enemy desires our failure. His deceit knows no limits. We need to understand this today. Verse 4 of this same chapter from Daniel and gives us a little clarity about where they were at. It said, Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. 
But they could find none. They could find no fault, no occasion for as much as he was faithful. And in him they found no error because of his faith. Standing on our faith oftentimes comes at a cost. We see this lady that we were just talking about in the video. Cost a job, cost a paycheck, cost, you know, whatever, all those different things. Sometimes standing on our faith costs something. But it's in those moments that we, that we can wrestle with the alone thing. Man, I mean, this is costing me everything. And, and nobody's coming to my aid. Nobody's coming to my side. There's, there's nothing, I don't know, that's a, that's a real place that we can really wrestle with because that is a true testing of our faith. Is this, is this worth it? Is this something? I mean, what am I doing? What am I hanging on for? Truly, it is a struggle if we're honest because emotions control so much of how we do things. Do we believe that today? Emotions control how we respond, how we everything. So the plot was on, we see. And Daniel knew about it because he's in the inner circle so, I mean, again, we're not talking about super wise people because they're trying to slip something in and the guy you're trying to slip it on is right there. You know, it's kind of like the devil telling Jesus, you can have everything you see if you'll bow down to me. And basically Jesus said, well, we don't get this. This is not, con- this is not in scripture, obviously. But I'm, I mean, basically, I think Jesus said, well, you big dummy, I made it. You can't give it to me. I mean, we're not dealing with the sharpest tools in the shed here when we're talking about the enemy because he is counting on us not paying attention. That's how stuff gets slipped in. And that's still true today. That's how he does it all the time. I can just get it past you if you're not paying attention. So Daniel here, we find him, he's not in a panic. He's not, oh, they're out to get me. And no, I'm worried. And I can't, we don't find him in that place, but rather we find him in a place of peace. He's going home and praying and he's trusting God. When we know When we know that our Father is there, when we know that the Lord truly means when He says never leave nor forsake, when that really means never, it it, it moves alone out of the picture if we'll allow it to. We begin to realize, wait a minute, I'm not in this battle by myself. I can do this. I can stand strong. My, My faith is being tested, but it's getting stronger. We see in verse 10, a powerful statement. It says that Daniel knew that the writing was signed. He knew this decree had happened. And he went to his house and the windows were open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. And he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he had always done. We see this powerful statement. This statement was made by actions, not words. So he didn't just go out and boldly proclaim, you can't tell me, you know, I got, no, no. He just went home and prayed. Because he trusted God would see him through it. You know, this was a a grand testing of his faith. And if you do this, the consequence are that you could be ripped to shreds by lions. Well, that doesn't sound very fun. You know, not at all. But he said, you know what? I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God because I know that he is there. This was a powerful, powerful testament of his faith. This was faith in actions. Faith which is growing is a faith that is in action. The testing, the testing of the moment, it demands a response. We need to understand that. The testing moment demands a response. And we're either going to cower to the bully of fear, to the lies of the enemy, or we're going to stand firm on what we know to be true. There's really no gray area there. That's the two places. We either believe it or we don't. And Jesus made that clear in his teachings. The Lord makes that clear all throughout all the different parts of Scripture. You either believe it or you don't. And Daniel, we see here, even though his faith is being tested, if you do this, this is what's going to happen. He said, I'm going to stand with God. I'm going to believe this to be true. Indeed, the test on our faith. When we don't feel the support of those around us, when that doesn't seem to be there or doesn't seem, you know, they they all seem to have left the building, those tests are kind of hard. You know, it's kind of like, you know, those movie scenes where you see a guy comes in and he says, you know, me and all my buddies, you know, we're we're here to stand firm. And he turns around, everybody's gone. Sometimes that's how we feel. You know, I'm going to stand firm on what I believe. But then we look around and it's like we're in an empty room. But 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 it's in that moment that we see clearly just how strong we are. We either really believe it or we don't. 
we see not only how strong we are, but we see how powerful God really is. So, so these ones that were plotting against Daniel immediately, they run to the king. They run to the king. Very similar to the account that we have a few weeks ago with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Basically, oh, I'm going to tell. I mean, think about how immature the, the mindset of this is. You know, people running around telling on each other. And I mean, are we in third grade? I mean, are we in kindergarten? What is it? But here, here's what, because they wanted more. And, 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 and greed and this, the strive for things that aren't necessarily good, sometimes it causes people to act in a very, very immature way. So we see from our text for the day in verse 11 that they came together and they found Daniel praying before the Lord. And so they ran in verse 12 to tell the king, oh, look at what Daniel's doing. They couldn't find anything wrong that he had done. So they created an issue, okay, because they had talked to the king. These groups had talked the king into signing this thing. And he signed it, never giving thought that it would end up affecting him personally. How many times does that still happen today? It's easy to make rules for everybody else until they have to apply to you. Okay, so the king here, he's made this thing, and he's not thinking that it's going to affect him personally in any kind of way. So he said, oh, yeah, that sounds great. You know, I'm the king. I, the idea of somebody worshiping me, that sounds pretty cool. You know, we'll shut everybody else down. I, I want to be in charge. I want to be up here. So they, they created this issue. But here's what we need to understand, friends. When the enemy is whispering, he is a liar. He is a cheater. He is a deceiver. And if he can cause us to doubt, if he can cause us to worry, or even greater, cause us to walk away, that is his goal. So here Daniel has received this notion of what is going down. You know, and, well, and my king, the guy that kind of likes me and stuff like that, I mean, he signed this thing, and man, what am I going to do? I'm going to go home and pray. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand firm on what I believe because I know that God is there. The pressure on Daniel would seem pretty incredible. This decree has been signed and others are watching and others are plotting and others are telling. But where do we find him? He's praying. He's praying. Why? Because he knows he's not alone. He knows he's not alone. And this is so important for us today as we think about the things that we struggle with in this life, whatever they may be. And they could be a ton of different things. There's, there's no limitations to that. Here's the question that we need to ask ourselves. Do I have that same place of comfort? Do I have that place of comfort in my life today that regardless of what king has signed what or who's telling on me, or it is a, do I have the peace and comfort to know that I can kneel before God, that I can stand before God in complete and total, absolute, guaranteed peace that I know he's there? It's a big deal. That's a big deal because our faith is being tested on a continual basis. I mean, we, we live in a time of nothing but threats almost, right? If you don't do this, you're going to be in trouble. If you do that. The Lord is saying, do you trust me or not? That's what Daniel was getting here. That's what he was beginning to understand. When our faith is the reason for the test. And oftentimes in this world today, it is, right? When our faith is the reason for the test. I want us to think about it like this from James chapter 1, beginning in verse 2. He says, consider it a gift. Consider it a gift, my friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced out into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so that you become mature and well-developed and not deficient in any way. Man, that's good stuff right there. That is, what, that is what we're beginning to understand here. So it's not always about the difficulty of the test. It's about the result. Think about that. That's our, kind of our statement for the week. It is not about the difficulty of the test. It is about the results. So what we need to see is faith wins. If we trust God, friends, it comes out on the right side of things. Now, it's not always the way that we want it. So sometimes we see that as a defeat. But we got to trust that God knows what he's doing. Daniel is praying. And the next thing we see here, he's before a reluctant king. He doesn't want to do this. He likes Daniel. He, he doesn't want to do this. But what we find in the midst of this is pride in politics. It forces the issue. Okay, because the king here, he's like, I don't want to do this. But the people say, well, you don't have a choice. 
You got a sign that nothing can change that. And well, I can't let people think that I'm a weak leader and I can't go back. Okay. Do we see how that's still a problem now? You know, you know, I, it drives me, and it's one of my pet peeves in life. It drives me crazy when somebody says, I can't do anything about it. And they're the ones that wrote it. Or they're the ones that created it. You know, it's, it's just, but that's, just, that's another soapbox. We won't get on that one. But, but we see here the king, pride in politics has gotten an issue. But, but, but look at what he said. This is what's so great. It says in verse 16, the king commanded and they brought Daniel. So he said, let it be. Go ahead. Cast him into the den of the lions. But the king spoke and he said to Daniel, so Daniel's on his way. He's received the sentence. He's on his way. He says, this is going to be carried out. The king looked at him and he says, your God, whom you serve continually. So he saw Daniel's faith being operated on a continual basis, regardless of his circumstances. And this is awesome. He will deliver you. Now, think about that for a minute here. The king is not a believer. He doesn't know the Lord, but he saw something through Daniel. He said, your God that you serve continually. We've all seen it, Daniel. We know how serious you are about this. You're the real deal. He will deliver you. Not might, not maybe, but will. Friends, we are not alone. I want us to understand that today. We are not alone alone. I know how difficult this world can be. I know how challenging it can be. And there are times that throwing in the towel seems like an easier answer. Okay. It's, it's rough sometimes, but we have one with us that no matter the level of difficulty, he is there. He is there. I, I know when it seems like that we're alone, it doesn't seem like he's there. I get that. I've been there, but he is. And our faith and our trust in him allows others to see him. And we have to understand, we have to understand that our faith impacts others. Just like here, what we see with Daniel, it says, your God that you serve continually. This is making an impact. This is changing things, even though we don't see it quite yet, because we see the king now, it, it goes on further in, as Daniel has gone on, it says the king went to his palace, he went back to his house, and he's just sick over this. He's pacing the floor, he's fasting, he's not eating, he can't sleep. But while he proclaimed Daniel's God would protect Daniel, it's clear the Lord, he doesn't know him. He's like, oh, he's going to take care of you, but I... What he's really saying is, I hope so. Maybe so. That's what I'm going to try to believe to make me feel better. Do we see the difference in knowing so and thinking so? It's a big challenge, right? When we know that God has got us. Because here we see Daniel's been praying. He knows that this is a rotten deal. But, but, but we not only see him praying, we don't see him resisting either. They escorted him right in. We don't see him fighting. We don't see him kicking, screaming, cursing, having a fit. You're doing me wrong. This is unreal, unjust. We don't see any of that. We don't know what is, how fast his heart rate is at that moment. But we see that there's some type of peace here. The following morning we would read in verse 19. It says, the king rose early that morning and he went in haste. He was hurried down to the den of the lions. And when he came into the den, he cried out. He cried out with a voice unto Daniel, and the king spoke and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is your God, whom you serve continually, was he able to deliver you from the lions? Deep inside, he wanted this to be true. Deep inside, he wanted Daniel to be okay. And Daniel's faith had impacted him. There's no doubt about that. He saw something in Daniel, and this dealt with his situation. It moved him. See, friends, our life is our witness. I talk about that all the time. The life we live is the lesson we teach. We need people to get that. The life that we live is the lesson we teach. This was Daniel. He says, your God that you serve continually, even in difficult moments, he always put God first. Even those who are plotting, trying to find something against him, he continues to be who he was. Even when those, you know, they said, well, now you can't pray, he continues because God is faithful to me. It's not a being rebellious or being a jerk. It was like, but no, God's never given up on me. Why am I going to give up on him? 
our life is our witness. The life that we live is the lesson that we teach. Daniel responds to the king, and he says, King, God sent his angel, and he shut the lion's mouth. They've not hurt me because I was innocent. I was innocent, and they found me as also before you, O king. I have done no harm. I have not been hurt. In other words, man, those kitty pillows were pretty awesome. I had a good night's rest. <laughs> I love that. You know, I mean, think about that. We, we read on the king, it says, with the king, it says in verse 23, was exceedingly glad. He was overjoyed. He was stoked. He was excited. Daniel's faith had impacted this king. This is what I want us to gather today, friends. Again, the life that we live is the lesson that we teach. If you're a note taker, that's something worth writing down. The Lord gave me that this week. The life that we live is the lesson that we teach. Because when we let others see that our faith is real, when we let others see that the presence of God in life is real, it's not about piety and look at how great I am and how more spiritual I am. No, it's that I've got something to lean on. I've got a rock to lean on that will not let me down. You know, I've got something to hold on to that when nothing else, when all the other strings are raveled and frazzled and no good, I've got something to hold on to that I will take me through every storm. I've got something that will hold on to that will take me even through the most difficult of circumstances, even a lion's den. The king was excited. He, he, was, he was overjoyed. And we see that he says in verse 26, I will make a new decree. That every dominion of my kingdom where men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, therefore he is, listen where the king's proclamation is now, he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom which shall never be destroyed and his dominion shall be until the end. He's not talking about his kingdom, he's talking about God. His life has been changed because the life that Daniel was living was an example. It was something new. Daniel realized, I'm not alone in this. God has got me in this. And the king goes on. And so he delivers and he rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and earth. The one who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. We see some excitement in this. We, we look at the testing of our faith. We've looked at that now for the last several weeks. This message today is going to wrap that up. We'll start a brand new series next week. I don't know what that's going to be yet. I'll be, I'm praying about it. Got an idea, but we'll see. But when we look at this story, again, that we oftentimes just equate to a children's story, Daniel, the lion's den, it's so cutesy and this and that. But there's depth here, friends, depth. And when we begin to understand this, we see our faith matters. Our faith matters matters and it matters more than we can because it impacts not just us it impacts others these testing moments that we go through well they're hard they are they're challenging they can be exhausting you know we think about it again we we, we go back to times as, as younger you know taking tests in school and whatever the case you know those were those were stressful you know, because you wanted to do well, you wanted to, you wanted to make the best grade, or you wanted to please your mom and dad, or you wanted to, you know, not be, not be a dummy, <laughs> or whatever the case. You, you wanted to do well. You wanted to perform well. But sometimes, again, depending on how many, how many questions were on there, or what the, what the uh, material was, you know, it, it could be stressful. It could be difficult. And, and sometimes the testing of our faith can fall into those categories. Sometimes we feel like this is too hard. Sometimes we think maybe this is unfair. Sometimes we think, well, I'm all alone. I can't do this. That would have been easy for Daniel to be in that position. Man, everybody's against me. And I, I mean, yeah, okay. You know, and now I've got to go to the lion's den. I mean, it would have been very, very easy, but we don't see that. We see there's a peace. There, there, there's a calming nature here. And it didn't just affect Daniel. It affected those who were watching because the king said, this God that you serve continually. What he's saying is we see it all the time and you never waver in that. The reward, friends, here's what, here's what we need to see is the testing is difficult. The testing is difficult, but the reward is souls coming to know Jesus. The reward of others saying, we see your God that you serve continually and we want to know about him. We want to know how in the world did you get there? How did you come to this place? That's the reward. That's the joy that we get from this. So here, we know that we're living in a time today of great deception. We know that. We know that we're living in a time of great delusion. 
Daniel, Daniel lets us know very clearly, and I want everybody to get this today. We're not alone. We're not alone. And I'm not talking about the little green guys coming down. I'm, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about something real. I'm talking about something tangible, something that we can hold within our spirit. God is saying to you today, whatever you're dealing with, I'm there with you. I'm there with you, even in the bowels of the lion's den, even in the fire of the furnace, even in whatever it may be, I am there with you if you will allow me to be. Daniel lets us know we're not alone. We've got one by our side, friends. Regardless of the circumstance, no matter where you are today, he will give you rest. He will give you rest. Even if you have to use a lion for a pillow. God is faithful. God is good. He will take care of us. Trust him. Walk with him. And let others see that life can be changed forever. And every time that test comes, our faith gets a little bit stronger, a little bit heavier, a little bit, a little bit more powerful to carry. And when we begin to realize, again, that the life that we live is the lesson that we teach, when we begin others to see that, when we begin to allow God to shine through us, just as the king saw in the life of Daniel, this one that you serve continually, he is the living God. He is the one that delivered you. And I think the real question is, how can I know him too? And that's the lesson that we need to get out to everybody. We're not alone, friends. God is with us now and forever. How many of us believe that today? Amen. Father, we thank you and we love you.